A country has its sights and its sounds. Some are seen and some are hidden. The Gambia Uncharted will be looking at the rough, the rugged, the remote parts of what make up this beautiful flat land we call ours, our home, our country, the Gambia. See, if you want to know this country, you have to be able to get to parts unknown, to get to parts uncharted, parts that are very difficult to get to or even access. And that's what Gambia Uncharted will do. We'll be looking at the foods, the cultures, the people, and the activities in these areas. Welcome to my Gambia, the Gambia I know, the Gambia I love, and the Gambia from the vantage point of my lenses. A rugged explorer, an explorer who wants to see the country in a different light. The country that most don't see, the landscape that most don't know about. And that's what I will venture into, and that's what I will show to the world. Follow me. Gambia is enchanted. Welcome to Gambia Uncharted. Today we're going to get a little bit creepy, so follow me. Alright, Kachikali, here I come. And today I'm visiting the Croc Pond. We will be at the Croc Pond trying to show for Gambia Uncharted what this place has to offer. So follow me as I get in. Well, this place started as a farmland owned by two brothers and a sister. This place used to be their farmland. There was a day that they came to the farmland and met a lady crying for help that her baby fell in the well. The pond started as a well. So one of the brothers get into the well, get the baby and gave it to the woman back. Then that decision woman went. The following day she came again and told them that, look, me, I am not a human being. I am a spirit. I'm trying to see how much can you guys help to assume one's problem. You guys have this place and it is well blessed by God, but you never know the benefit of this place. Where my baby felt in could help out to sort out people's difficulties. And there are two little crocodiles in this well here. If you put your eye on it, 
it will be benefiting from one generation to another generation of yours. So since the man and the woman mentioned that to them, then they will, she told them the benefits of the place as well, that it will help people like a barren woman. So people who have problems getting babies, if they come here, in most cases in God's will, if they pray, do their prayers, God will answer their prayers in most cases, and which is almost like 80% successful. It's not 100%, but at least 180% successful. It's not only about babies also. Some people came here because they need success in their business, promotion at their job site, politicians, looking for wife, husband, sick students, they came here. It is of different purpose if you have the belief that's what matters. So it's a spiritual it's a place spiritual basically. Place, physically. And a lot of people felt like their prayers have been answered. answered. But then again, okay, I see this place also as a touristic value for the Gambia. I mean, tourists visit countries because they want to see the sights, of the, the culture of the people. Mm -hmm. And I think in terms of Gambian culture, this is one of the most important places mm -hmm. in our history and folklore. Wow, amazing. This is just so amazing. And um, I guess this is what makes Kachikali, you know, a, not only a sacred site, but a special site because not many places around the world will I dare to come close to a croc. We all know of Steve Irwin, the Australian croc man. He was killed by animals he thought that were tamed. But for one reason or another, the crocs in here in Kachikali, I won't say all crocs in the Gambia, the crocs in Kachikali, for one reason or another, are so tamed they can cohabitate with humans in a very, very peaceful manner. And this, for me, is mysterious. Mythically here, there used to be a big silk or cotton tree mm -hmm. that um, people used to talk about. It's legendary in here. Mm -hmm. And um, where is the tree? Still in there, yeah, in the in the forest. Yes, in the forest. Okay, let's go have a look. All right. And w what was the purpose of the tree here, as it relates to the place? Is it a, is it sacred or what's it about? It is a sacred tree, anyway. That people have strong belief in the tree as well. In the olden days, that the tree contain uh, contain a spirit that can fight against any bad spirit coming towards people. So in those days, our people normally used to bring kids here and circumcise them locally. Okay. Because there are strong beliefs attached to the tree that it contains a spirit that can fight against any bad spirit coming towards people. Okay. But trees like that and baobab trees are very respectful trees within the sub-region. Mm -hmm. That tree has been here for over 500 years old. 500 year old tree. Yeah. In and the life expectancy goes to 1000 years that they can live for. Wow. Amazing. That's amazing. It is. And the tree produces a cotton, but all what we can use this cotton for is to fill up our sleeping pillows okay. because we don't have raw materials to make clothes out of it. Okay. Wow, that's the mighty cotton tree. It is. This is amazing, amazing. And um, I remember coming here as a child, this tree was still here. Wow. Mm -hmm. Look at this. Still around. This is amazing. And these are the roots of a cotton tree right here. I am touching a root of a tree. Amazing, breathtaking. This is nice. This is the Gambia that a lot of people don't see. A lot of people don't know. And today I'm at the Karton Reptile Farm or the Gambia Reptile Farm in Karton. And in here, I mean, they have all kinds of reptiles and all kinds of little animals. So I'm pretty happy to be here. But um, I will have a guide. His name is Asan. Asan, 
I really want you to take me around and show me what's in here. How are you doing? Fine. You're right? Yep. Are you scared of your animals? No. No? no. So you'll give me a good guide? Yes. Sure? Yep. Can we start here? Show me what you have here. Okay. Here we have the puff adder. These ones, what makes them dangerous is that they don't move like other snakes. They, they are more like always hiding. Mm -hmm. So they move slowly. That's what makes them dangerous. They don't move like most of the other snakes. They move more like a worm. Like wow. Contraction and extension of the worm. So they are constrictors. No, they are not constrictors. They have venom. And they are normally found around leaves because if you look at the color of the snake, it mimics dry leaves. I mean, if you look at these leaves relative to their skin texture and color, they, it's very close. Yes, that's why they use it for hiding on the dry leaves. Okay, okay. And they're very common in Gambia? Very common. Here we have the egg-eating snake. Mm-hmm. They eat them. eggs? And what else? They eat only eggs. Only eggs? Yes. Wow. That's why they have no teeth. Okay. Amazing, amazing. So they are the most harmless snakes you can find in Gambia. Wonderful, and these are nice. I like the the. F Ooh, okay. And how old is this snake? This one here must be maybe one year and a half. A year and a half. Yep. And you feed them with eggs. Yep. And they know how to crack the eggs, or you have to do it yourself. No, they swallow the whole egg, and then they break it in the stomach. Okay. And how often do you feed them? Well, most anytime we have some eggs, people bring them and we give it to them. Wonderful, wonderful. That's nice, but chicken eggs are too big for them. Well, they can, they are quite incredible. They can eat eggs four times the size of their head. Are you for real? Yeah. So this one can swallow a chicken egg? Yep, I can swallow it completely. Nature and its awesome, awesome hidden gems. I, I mean, I never know that a snake this size with a mouth this wide can swallow a whole chicken egg. That is amazing. Actually, there's two kinds of eggs. Oh, there's two kinds. There's an, okay. All right. They egg eating snakes, but they have different colors. All right. This one here, so it's a baby. That's a baby. So this is maybe about a few months old? Yep. All right. How often do they do this? Well, every year they change their skin. Once, twice? Well, anytime there's when the rainy season is ending, they change it every uh, year. Okay. Okay. And about the skin, some Gambians believe that if you cut a few part of the skin and put it in your pocket, you'll be very rich. Money, money, money. You see, these are some of the things that Gambians are so um, used to. We have a lot of practices and a lot of traditions that we have inherited from old. And people really tend to equate money and snake fleece. But that's what it is. Beautiful. Well, here we have some heron snakes. And if you check well, you'll see them hiding always there. Wow. Wow. They love to hide. Yep. They're always on hiding. Mm-hmm. See? Beautiful. So we have the baby baby crocodiles over here. Wow, amazing. How old are these? Well, for the big one, I think maybe two years or something like that. But the small one is one year. One year? Yep. And what do they feed on right now? Right now we give them sometimes fish and sometimes frogs from time to time. Sometimes. Wow, amazing. And the skin, whew. And these are different from alligators. These are crocodiles. Yep, they're different. They're different. Yep. See, I like the environment in here. There's a lot of nature. And um, I guess you have different type of reptiles. Wow, amazing. That's a big boy. What's this? This one is the Nile monitor lizard. It's a monitor lizard? Yes. Okay. They're very fast though. Yes, very fast. On ground. Okay. And what do they feed on? Well, they feed on anything they can catch throughout the Okay, okay. And they like to be in the water? Yes, on the water, sometimes on trees, you see the marks on the trees. Okay. Those looks like some um, turtles. Yes. These are turtles. They were caught here and all of them just put them. Are they breeding in here? Yeah, well, we have their reproduction molars every year. All right. a few of them because they're cute. So what do you do with the rest? Well, the rest we release them. To the wild? Mm -hmm. Amazing. And how old are these on average? 
Um, most of them are Middle East and many of them are grown ups. Grown, okay. All right. Okay, we're going. You yeah. see the big pattern? Mm -hmm. You can come in. See over there? Yeah. That is the rock python. Okay. This one over there actually is not tame, but for the other one it is tame. During daytime, you can touch it here, outside. Alright. And this one's not tame? No, that one there is not tame. Okay, and how often do you feed them? Well, we feed them most of the time at 5 o'clock by this time. Okay, okay, amazing. And that one looks like he or she is full. Cause uh, he is full. He is full. Yes. So what do you feed these pythons with? Well, we feed them with the Gambian rat, the big one. The dicks, the Gambian rat? Yes, the yeah. dicks. Well, the Gambian rat is the famous rat not only in Gambia but worldwide, especially in South America and also parts of North America, places like Florida. The, you know, we call it Dirimo, but it's called the Gambian rat. It's a mega-sized rat. And I'm sure, how, how many of them do they eat each? Well, sometimes one, but if they're really hungry, they can eat even three if they want. Wow, amazing, amazing. So, what do you have here? Well, here we have two kinds of snake. We have the royal python and the wow. sand snake. Okay? That's a royal python right there. Yep. And these are what? These are sand snakes. Sand snakes. Yes. Take this one out. And actually right now they're changing skin. Okay, Especially. they're shedding. Yes. For these ones, they are called bull pythons by the Americans. Mm -hmm. Because when they're afraid, they don't think of biting. They just roll themselves in a bowl. In a bowl. Oh, and their temperature is real low because it's cold. Yes. They are cold-blooded animals. Yeah, I know, but it's real cold. So right now they're shedding. Yes. Mm -hmm. And if you want to put it around your neck, you can put it around your neck if you want. Like this. And they cool. Yes, they cool. This one is they never bite. Unless if you smell like mouse. Because... <laughs> because... Well, I don't think I'm smelling like mice right now. So I don't think I'm a problem to that. Most of them. <laughs> I'm no problem. What's up? So, here we have the sand snakes. For these ones, us out sand snakes, they're quite tame. So if you want, you can touch them. And you will see they have some kind of plastic feeling. <laughs> but can they creep? No, they can't come up. Okay. It's too long. So you want to touch it? Yeah, very rubber-like. Okay. So, this one here is the second fastest snake after the beauty snake. Okay. See? And they're very harmless. Well, they can bite. But they have no venom. Yeah. And for these ones here, they are tame. They're but tame. in the nature, they will be so scared that when you touch them, they may bite. Yeah. See, this is amazing. I want to know, how can you tame this? Well, many animals, most of the snakes, they bite when they're scared. So you have to be in a calm place and just keep on touching them. They will try and bite and bite and bite. When they get tired, you touch them and then another day the same thing for many days and then they just get the use of you touching them. Ah, that's amazing because um, this is nice. I'm, I'm just so in love with this and I, I like it. And honestly, I think um, this is one way for Gambians to get close to nature because I'm just looking at the environment. Everything here is peaceful and everything here is in harmony. The nature is in harmony and these snakes are at peace and they're at peace with me. So. I just so love it. This is amazing, amazing. This is a nice little jungle. I, I, I mean, I'm just so in love with this. I like this. And it's calm and peaceful in here. Here we have the baby turtles. Can you see? It is the babies of the first turtle you saw. Oh, okay. And these are flippers, they're not Yes. These are sea turtles? Yeah, no, actually they are river turtles. River turtles, okay. Yes. So if you want to hold it, you can hold it. Amazing. And how old are these? Well, these ones, they are three months. Three months old. Okay. What are these? These are land crabs. They feed on many things, anything they can eat on. But 
Many Gambians don't eat them because they say that they feed on feces. That's why. Yep. Anyway, I'm so used to seeing them, especially in the swamps. Yes. They're very prevalent in the mangroves. And um, I think in Wolof they call Nyankar and I forgot the other name. Don't hope. Ah. Yeah, I've heard that word before growing up. But these are amazing. I like I like what I see, and um, they're living close to their natural habitat as it relates to how they would have been in the marshes. So amazing. Okay, here we have the home snake. Home snake. What's yeah. a home snake? There are snakes I'm that. I'm a bit um, ignorant as it relates to snakes. This snake they are always found inside of houses. That's why people call them home or house snake. So they, they go under your bed and things like that? Yes. And that's because they feed on the mouse. Okay. They're that's like why. mice. Yes. All right. This snake looks small. Yes. But as a child, I know and I was told that this is a dangerous snake. Yes. How dangerous are these? Well, this Little snake, things. this snake, what makes it dangerous is that it feeds only on other snakes. So we know that snakes that feed on other snakes, they have quite a potent venom. So that's a neuro. This can affect your brain when they bite. Well, if it bites you, you may need a small amputation. Do you have like antidote in here? Well, here we don't have it, but it was said that in MRC there are some of them. There's some antidote. Yes. Okay. It's a baby turtle. Yes. How it's... old? Well, this one here is 11 years. Wow. But it can grow to 150 years. I know, because I've seen them big. Yes. And this one is the second biggest turtle you have in the world, after the Galapagos. The Galapagos Islands, yeah, they're turtles. And what's the name of this turtle? Jokelon Silkata. learning to live in peace with the snake. This is Gambia Uncharted. Okay. Wow, thank you so much. You're welcome. Woo, that's, that's one heck of a food. Let me see how this tastes. This is nice, man. And um, this is something, I wouldn't call it local, but it's neither international also, but um, Gambian taste, Gambian flavored, and part of the new Gambian cuisine. <laughs>